Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Dirigo in the five minute pool on ICC. This player is 2290, and let's play Knight F3 followed by G3. Just a new setup that I've been experimenting with. Not that I don't get into these positions on occasion from other openings, a Fianchetto of Light Square Bishop, but it always pays to spice up your repertoire a bit. I don't recall having faced Dirigo before. They say in their notes that they have a FIDE rating of 2132. So that's respectable. Peak 5-minute rating of 2311. All right, so I'm choosing sort of a modest setup with uh, the Fianchetto of the Dark Square Bishop as well. I think playing for c4. Well, let's play knight bd2 first, but I'll play for c4 hereafter and try to pressure the center, try to pressure that d5 pawn. The position's not completely symmetric because I Fianchettoed both bishops and black has developed their light square bishop to f5. Here I think just rook c1 is decent. I know white will often continue with e3 and fortify d4. If black attacks my a pawn with queen a5, I think I can just play a3 just fine. Just seeing if there's a reason to do anything else. Nah, let's play a3. d2 is defended twice by my queen and my knight. Maybe I can play b4 and push back the queen. This move strikes me as maybe an overreaction on black's part. Okay, so let's play b4, and if queen b6, I think I'll trade on d5 and then maybe play knight b3. I could play c5 with tempo, but I have a feeling it's better to do this and then look to play knight b3 and get a knight into c5. This also stops black from playing a5, since my knight and my pawn are cooperating on that square. Okay, so queen there, maybe just knight c5. Yeah, let's go ahead and sink the knight into the outpost square. Again, if a5, I can play knight b7 and then take the pawn on a5. All right, so he's going to come into c4. That's probably a good reaction. Okay, knight e5, perhaps. Yeah, let's do this. So now I've got both knights outposted. Maybe they could chase away the e5 knight with f6, but in doing so, they'd have to block out their own dark square bishop. If knight c4, I was just thinking about taking the knight. So black will have to decide, like, how bad do they want the knight to get into c4? Taking on e5 doesn't look appetizing. I take with the d-pawn, and I'll have the d4 square for my queen or my bishop. So on the whole, I think this position's all right. He goes for the f6 plan. Can I play knight b7? Knight b7, queen b8 doesn't look very good. Be nice to not have to retreat this knight for now. I could try for f3 if I wanted. That would be kind of interesting. f3, fe5, fe4... Hmm. That could be worth a shot. F3, there's also knight takes g3. H takes g3, take. Yeah, hmm. Not liking that as much. I could take on e4 right now, and then maybe establish my knight on c6. If I take e4, probably they'll take with their... Oh, it's hard to say, actually. Hmm. Suddenly, I, I want to think a little bit in this position because there's a bunch of possibilities. Like, even moves like g4 come to mind. g4, fe5, I take here. Hmm. Because if I just have to meekly retreat this knight, I think knight c4 comes in and black is looking pretty pretty good there. I want to do something more violent, <laughs> but I can't figure out what. Okay, you know what? I'm going to take this and then try to get my knight into c6, I think. If pawn takes, I might play rook c6. Although then my knight has no flight squares. Hmm. We'll have to see. I don't know. That, that may, not, may not have been a good decision, taking on e4, if they play de. I have ideas with queen b3 check, but they'll play bishop e6. Maybe de, rook c6, and then say queen d8, queen b3 check, 
king f7, and then I can play knight f or king h8, I can play knight f7. So rook c6 here. Just kind of a haphazard position, so I want to make sure I get this right. I think this is good though. Let's do it. Queen d5. Okay, I was thinking rook c5 against that. Although, does he have queen a2? He might. And then we'd have to speculate on a peace sack. Hmm. Rook c5, queen a2, knight c6, take b2, take e7, take f5, take everything. <laughs> All right, let's give it a shot. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So yeah, I'm going to let this bishop drop. I mean, it was kind of a doomed piece anyways. It's locked in behind my pawns. I don't know if I'm going to get enough play for the piece. I'm going to get two pawns. Check. After I take on f5. And should I take... No, nah, let's take this one. I want to weaken e4. This pawn I can support with, like, pawn e3. And I'm hoping, like, maybe I get bishop e4 in and I can go attack the h7 pawn. Maybe my queen will sneak out to h5 and do some damage. Yeah, like, playing e3 helps a lot. And then I can try to attack this guy. Also, bear in mind that b5 is hanging, so I may decide to switch up and go take that pawn. So for the moment, he defends that. Maybe queen g4 and just go take e4. Now, but let's do this. I think grabbing this pawn and maybe liquidating the queen side is our best policy because then I don't have to worry about black like rushing his a and b pawns and making a queen or something. Let's bring this back. I don't want to trade prematurely. So I have two pawns. Again, like probably not enough compensation, but for a blitz game, I mean, this actually looks like kind of a tough position for black to hold together. I have a very compact formation. And yeah, like d5 is a, a tender point, so is e4. That move, he's maybe trying to play knight to c3 and offer a trade of queens. So let's go after that queen. Ah, that's what you wanted to do. Okay. Hmm. Let's keep the queens on the board. Go attack the e4 pawn. Maybe swing the rook up through the b file somehow. King h1. King h1 seems lame. Okay, let's do this first. And we'll go attack this pawn. I'm hoping my queen doesn't get trapped on the side of the board there. It's a little strangely placed at the moment. Okay, so now if this knight moves, he would lose f5. So at least I can attack that, that point. Gotta watch the time. I have a feeling he's gonna try to blitz me out soon. Okay, let's do this and try to maneuver a bit. Maybe bishop into e6 if we get a chance. For the moment, it's not working, but... Hmm. Check. Okay, I'm going to do this and then try to go after the e4 pawn. Which he may find difficult to defend. I is knight g6. Okay, let's keep the rooks on the board. Check. Hmm. Bishop e6 could be a threat. Okay, let's get rid of that g-pawn for now. Hmm. Okay, go attack that. Maybe bishop f7 was good, I don't know. Time warning. Hard to say Check. what's happening here. Okay, now I'm going to win this pawn at least. Okay, we dropped his rook too. Check. Well, kind of a disastrous sequence for him there. Okay, let's start advancing. Check. Pick up the bishop. Let's Check. Let's go take that knight. Check. 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 Should be able to mate him with this amount of time. 
Just want to make sure checkmate. I don't stalemate him. Okay. So we get the checkmate. Yeah, uh, I think, strictly speaking, I have a feeling I should not have enough compensation, let's say, right around here. But the position is interesting. And I have two pawns for the piece, like I was saying. And he's got weaknesses, like e4 and also b5. Uh, potential weakness of his king. Note that my king is quite safe. So I have a feeling if black plays like computer perfect moves here, they should be better. But in a game with limited time, it might be easier to play white's position. And I wasn't thrilled about the prospect after f6 of having to retreat this night. So I gambled and sacked a piece. Although truth be told, when I played rook c6, I didn't see this queen d5, queen a2 idea. So it's probably more correct to say that I backed into sacrificing a piece. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this. Yeah, and I think at the end he tried to uh, play for time too quickly. He should have waited a little bit. He had a perfectly fine position, but once he started dropping a pawn or two, he started making further blunders like rook c2. Okay, so yeah, this is a symmetric position where uh, white has tried a lot of things to get an edge. Probably black is completely fine, but I've seen some people have success with this b3, bishop b2 idea, so I just did that. I'm going to fast forward to right here when he played b5, because this struck me as a bad idea for black, but in the game it worked out okay for him. Because I get to play b4 with tempo, so that's why I was thinking black's idea wasn't so successful, but maybe it's alright. Knight b3. I was kind of hyping this move because in playing knight b3, I gain a grip on a5 and c5. More so a5, but I was trying to transfer my knight into the c5 square as well. The engine says just play e3, maybe look to play knight h4 and attack the bishop. Yeah, e3 is useful because we control this square. It's possible that black's queen is just poorly placed on b6, but what about a5? Like, this is a move that I wasn't sure I wanted to allow attacking b4 and trying to activate the rook on the a file. Knight h4, a takes b4, a takes, queen d6, and black has good play. Hmm. Yeah, maybe this is acceptable for black, this whole thing. e3 seems kind of lame. If knight h4 right away, is there a problem on d4? Like, bishop takes d4? Guess not, because I can do this and attack their queen, and after a trade... There's an x-ray idea on the knight on d7, so yeah, he'll lose a piece. Like, d takes e4, I grab the bishop, and then go take d7. So that doesn't work out for him. Yeah, maybe knight h4. This might be the moment where I have to key into something concrete versus playing to maneuver, like with knight b3. Because after this, he freed up b6 for his knight, which was quite a good idea, I think. Yeah, even here, the engine wants to play knight h4, as opposed to jumping into the outpost square. If black doesn't have kind of a symmetrical response to me getting my knight into c5, in other words, if black can't get their knight into c4, create a similarly dangerous outpost, then I think white must be better here. This knight is too strong, and taking this knight will always be good for white. I get to establish a protected pass pawn, and black wants no part of a scenario like this. So knight b6 was strong by Dirigo. Dirigo. I played knight e5, and yeah, crucial position here. How much time did I spend on this next move? Minute and a half on deciding whether to retreat my knight or do something else. So, like, imagine you had this position in a tournament game, and you're thinking about playing knight e5, which appears to be a decent move. You would want to have your response prepared against f6, uh, before playing knight e5, so that when f6 is played, you don't have to think again. In a blitz game, you're not going to have that luxury, but that's why I spent so long here, because I didn't have my response prepared, and there were several interesting moves. Like, you can see I thought about knight takes e4, I thought about g4, I thought about just retreating the knight, which the engine says is best, knight e d3. I was fearful of this happening, but the engine says it's no big deal e3, and this bishop is defended, so probably black will not take that bishop, because it is such a bad bishop right now. At the same time, I have a hard time believing white has any advantage here. Black's knights look just as effective as my knights. The knights are what's really driving the action right here, because the bishop's 
aren't playing huge roles yet. The position is not open enough. This is a prime position for the Knights to be relevant because it is so closed. There's only one open file and the structure is so locked that the Knights are gonna maneuver and try to gain strangleholds and outposts on certain squares as Black's trying to do with C4 and as I've done with C5. So I took on E4, attacking their queen, so they took back rook c6, and he must have planned this sequence because he played queen d5 right away. Yeah, and now I'm practically forced to go for this line that I played in the game because I can't move my knight anywhere, really. Uh, not only is my knight like lacking good squares to go to, but even if I did something like this, I would drop the rook. So rook c5 attacking the queen. If he had played queen here, I could at least play knight c6 then, or repeat with rook c6. So black took up the challenge and played queen a2. I went here. Check. And we obtained this intriguing imbalance with white having two pawns for the piece, so I'm only down one point of material. That's what the number in parentheses means, by the way. This is just the material count. I don't recommend playing with the material, material count, especially if you're um, an improving player, like a newer player. But um, it's just kind of handy to be able to look at it if you or in time pressure or something and can't count the material on your own. So yeah, I have two pawns for the piece, and Black's king is somewhat weakened. But like I said, I think my my feeling about this was correct, that I shouldn't quite have enough for the piece. It should be a small black advantage if they play it correctly. He played rook a d8. That didn't seem to help him too much, because he is attacking d4, but e3 is a move I want to play anyways to solidify my structure and firmly defend the d4 pawn. So you shouldn't really help your opponent make moves that they need to play regardless. So it's a natural move, but maybe he could have played better here. Yeah, like rook a e8, the engine says, is better. I'm not in uh, any position to start advancing this d-pawn recklessly, so putting the rook on d8 probably isn't best. Although maybe it's not so bad, I don't know. I mean, he does gain use of the d5 outpost. He can put a knight there. And here I took b5. The engine says this is better. I thought about that for a second, but I was worried that he might eliminate my queenside pawns. But the immediate attack on the e4 pawn, the double attack, could be more relevant. So maybe I should play queen g4. This also is not that great according to the engine. Again, I should play queen g4. I suppose I do have rook a5 on the next move if I want it. So yeah, maybe putting the queen in a position where we could win this pawn would be good. Because if I can take e4 with my bishop, then I'm ready to create a queen-bishop battery against h7. So I could do that immediately, perhaps. Instead, the queen's the queenside pawns got liquidated. I tried to keep material on board. Queen b5 was kind of an odd move. It didn't occur to me why he would play queen b5. I thought, like, why are you putting your queen in a self-pin? <laughs> but then after I played rook a b1, I realized, oh, he's actually going to drop the queen back and offer a trade. I tried to avoid the trade. The engine says I should just Check. take it and play this position, rook b5. This would be tough to win for black. I mean, to win this, he's going to have to break down my super solid structure and not lose e4 in the process. So... In all likelihood, I mean, white can, white can hold out here, put up a good fight. The engine says it's dead equal. Queen h4, f5. He started pushing me back a little bit. I did get to attack the f5 pawn. So I think the reason why black is better here compared to uh, that scenario with the queens getting traded is here my queen has been sidelined. And if he's able to manage the pressure on f5 and e4, that should be a big deal. I mean, my queen is a piece I really want in the game. And I might have to do some awkward maneuver like this, and then like queen g2 or bishop f1, move the bishop here, here, and then get the queen to f1 in order to activate it again. Yeah, so here, that's a good point that the engine is making. He could have played f4, trying to rip open the g-file and disrupt my structure. That's the type of move that black is going to have to find at some point to win, if they want to play for a win, I think, because... Otherwise, my structure is not going to be taken apart. But f4, like a, a forceful moment like this, may do the trick. So if I take with a g-pawn, rook g7, 
Maybe looking to play rook g8. King here. Yeah, rook dg8. I can't move my bishop now because I get mated on g1. Mate. So rook takes d5. Queen Check. takes g2. Queen takes g2. Rook takes g2. For the moment, white has three pawns for the piece, but black is incredibly active, and probably the f2 pawn is falling. I don't think I can defend it. Like, rook here, yeah, bishop h4, and he's coming in. Hmm, rook g5, trying to sever the coordination between the rooks. Rook takes f2. Check. Yeah, Check. This, this looks bad for white. So, that, that's instructive. I think if you're just thinking long-term here, which probably wouldn't occur in a blitz game so much, but uh, black needs something dynamic to take me apart versus trying to win this based on the extra point of material alone. Like that's probably not going to happen. They need to um, detonate my pawn structure if they want to prevail in this game and get the full point. As played, we traded some more pieces and eventually traded queens too. Check. Yeah, and these pawns were a handful for black to defend. Again, the evaluation has turned around. Like now there's no direct threats against my king, so check. I'm perhaps out of the woods. I thought about swapping. Maybe I can do that and then go after this. Oh, I saw this line, but for some reason I didn't play it. This, this would have been acceptable, attacking the knight and also the g4 pawn. So after the knight moves, I get three pawns for the piece, and white should not lose now. Black's running out of pawns. Check. Okay, this is also equal, but Check. here we were about to get into a time scramble. Yeah, and he just blundered. Huge coming up. Check. Drop the e4 pawn, and then just drop the rook immediately thereafter. Rook c2, that was the game, basically. Check. And I held on for the victory with my 15-odd seconds. Checkmate. All right, I like this game. This was um, kind of a rich game for a blitz game, a lot of tactical ideas. And critical moment after 95, this is where the tactics really kicked in. And yeah, this sacrifice, although on paper and according to the engine, it shouldn't be anything Black has to worry about. For a blitz game, I'm, I'm satisfied. I would make that sacrifice again in view of Black's scattered and weak pawns. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll be back again soon with another one. Bye, guys.